Our next subject is conventional corn. How do you manage it for maximum yields and profitability? Well, the first thing you have to think about here is weed control. That's what I am most worried about in conventional corn. When Roundup corn came out, or for that matter, even Liberty corn, it made it real easy because we had a grass rescue. One of the nice things, or maybe one of the bad things, is I've been an agronomist for a really long time now. And I just remember back when conventional corn wasn't called conventional corn, it was just called corn. So before those days of Roundup and Liberty, we used to have to manage this corn, or what we now call conventional corn, without these other herbicide options. So what we did is we made sure that we had a great pre-emerge herbicide out there. That was the whole key. If you had a great pre, you could follow with something post-emerge to clean everything else up, and you were in pretty good shape. The biggest thing that you lose, though, and the biggest thing that we gained when we went to Roundup and Liberty Corn was the rescue on grass. Grass is the number one weed problem in conventional corn, and for that matter, I'd say it's the number two problem and the number three problem. You have to get grass under control. It is the biggest yield robber in corn, period. Let's talk about that grass control a little bit more. It's certainly going to start with a good pre-emerge herbicide, and here's one of the challenges over the last 10 or 15 years. We've switched away from using a full rate of a grass pre-emerge and gone to a cut rate of a grass pre-emerge mixed with a partial rate of a broadleaf herbicide. It's been nice in Roundup Ready crops, for example, where Roundup is going to come back and take care of any volunteers and escapes. But when you look at grass control, it's gone backwards. So we need to get back to that full rate of a grass pre, especially since the options are pretty limited post-emerge in conventional corn. Okay, so what Darren means specifically here with full rate of a grass pre is dual, outlook, harness, surpass, Zidua, one of those group 15s at the maximum labeled rate for your soil and your soil type, you can just look on the label. The only choice you have post-emerge for grass is Accent, that's it, and I would tell you Accent's not that great. It's okay if the grass is at one to two inches tall, that's your only rescue. So in other words, you've got to be out there very early scouting to make sure that your pre did great, otherwise you have to follow with Accent. Now we will get questions, people will say, well, I hear Impact or Laudis or some of these herbicides are pretty good, especially when I throw it with a half pound of atrazine. Will these HPPDs do well on my grass? And my answer is always no. It's not going to do that great on grass if you have a whole bunch of grass. A few blades here and there that are a half inch tall, sure, you can do okay on that. So I'm just trying to say here, you've got to focus on grass if you're going to conventional corn. And I would tell you, if you don't get a full rate of a straight grass killer down pre-emerge, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're going to end up losing yield on that conventional corn. Make sure you get that out early, and then hopefully you don't have a lot of grass escapes. Of course, with broadleaf control and conventional corn, it's not difficult at all. You can use products like Status or these HPPDs plus some atrazine if that's applicable in your crop rotation you'll do a great job on the broadleaves. So weed control, okay, that's one issue. The other issue that I'm really concerned about though, Brian, is insect control. First of all, if you don't have a corn rootworm BT hybrid, you've got to use an insecticide in furrow to try to control those bugs. Or T-band. Well, you can. It's, it's, there's, there's different ways you can like plant, but you have, to do yep. it, you have to do it planting time is what I should say. So planting time corn rootworm insecticide because there's no rescue post-emerge. The other bug, though, that doesn't get enough talk is the European corn borer. I get it. There are other insects that can impact that, that corn late season, but corn borers are really growing in numbers in certain areas of the country, and not many people have scouted for corn borers for the last generation. Back in the 1990s, well, Brian and I would spend a good portion of the summer out looking in cornfields for egg masses and scouting for corn borers and these types of things to try to make sure we got the treatment done at the proper time. It's not just, well, I can spray a foliar insecticide. It's, I'm going to put a foliar insecticide out within a few days. You've got a window of maybe a few days at best to do a good job on corn borer. And the problem is you're not going to get that 100% control like you were seeing out of the BT trait. So I can just tell you on my farm, I'm not giving up that BT trait. In fact, I don't even like the refuge acres. We're losing yield on the refuge acres and that's only 5%. But you start figuring it out, uh, that makes a difference in my overall yield and profitability. So I don't even like the refuge acres. Anyway, for somebody who scouted literally hundreds of thousands of acres in my life, I can just tell you with that corn borer, if you don't 
don't get it extremely timely, you're going to go from 90% control to 60 or 70% control, so that's a big problem, and you're going to lose yield. Now, the good news is insecticides are dirt cheap, so you can go out there with a pyrethroid and spray it two, three, four times during the summer and do a fairly decent job on European corn borer, the first generation, the second generation, but again, the BT is really the way to go because there I get 100% control and I don't have to make more trips across the field. With conventional corn, we, we mentioned a few management things that you can do. The other thing is just don't skimp on fertility. And I realize that a lot of the choices being made to go to conventional corn are just simply to save costs. Don't cut your fertility, otherwise you're going to have weaker stalks, weaker roots, and if you do have any kind of insect pressure, it's just going to be that much tougher for your corn to compete. You've got a lot of yield potential in the conventional hybrids. Most of those hybrids are just the same ones that are getting used in the traded products. They just haven't crossed the trait into them yet. So they've got really good yield potential for the most part. Just make sure you're feeding those crops in order to be successful. Yep, that's probably the last thing that I would leave you with too is yield potential in conventional corn is great. Just pick the right hybrid to fit on your ground and make sure you spread your risk, plant multiple hybrids, okay? But I'm just trying to say place hybrids based on your soils, your soil type, all that type of thing. And again, if it's me, I'm focused number one on weed control and then you also have to look at insects as well. And back to weed control, controlling weeds like our Weed of the Week is really critical. We'll show you how to do that coming up next.